Hi, Liz. Hey, how are you? I'm doing okay. Let me introduce us. I'm Robert Wright of Blogging Heads TV, and this is The Right Show, and you're Liz Mayer, our political consultant from the right. You were the online communications director for the Republican National Committee in the previous election in 2008. Mm-hmm. And so what did you think of this second big matchup? Um, I thought it probably emerged as a draw. I think Obama did a little better, although, um, you know, needless to say, I wasn't still particularly impressed with his performance, but I think that uh, just in terms of style points, he did perform better. Um, I thought that Romney performed really about the same, although there was one really big opportunity that I felt that he missed. So uh, probably pretty much. What was was the big opportunity? Well, I think when the question was asked about what happened with Libya, I felt like, you know, we had a discussion last time about how Romney normally is very good about saying, well, first of all, I do this. Second of all, I do this. Third of all, I do this. And how in the previous debate, Obama, rather than doing that, was sort of like, and unicorns and ponies and spaceships and books Mm -hmm. and libraries and sofas. Um, And you would get to the end of it and go, what did he say? What was the point of that? I felt like that's pretty much what Romney did with that answer. And that's unfortunate because I think most Republicans who were watching at that moment felt that that was probably the best opportunity that Romney had to really stick it to Obama and pretty much fluffed it. Um, However, I felt that in the rest of the debate, he performed pretty strongly. Um, That and the fact that he seemed to be arguing with moderator a lot and doing a lot of the like, no, I get this amount of time. No, I get this. Those were really my only major criticisms of him, you know, and on Obama, obviously I have issues with a lot of the substance, um, but there wasn't a lot stylistically uh, that I, that I would quibble with apart from at the beginning. I felt like he was straining either to be capable of speaking fluidly without it relying on pre-rehearsed and pre-prepared standard remark type things. Or I'm sure that there are people who will say he can't cope without his teleprompter. And I guess both of those are kind of the same thing. Like when you're used to being able to deliver yeah. something formulated, sometimes these town hall forums become tougher. Yeah, uh, I thought um, I, I thought Obama started a little slowly, but I thought aside from that, uh, he was. I thought he was great and did everything he had to do. Um, the uh, you know he, he certainly erased exactly the doubts about himself that he that he raised in the first debate, mm-hmm. uh, and and you know polls showed. I mean, first of all, every poll I saw of viewers who watched it gave Obama a victory by at least some margin. Um, it usually wasn't huge, but uh, but that seemed to be the consensus. But a in, particularly interesting thing was, did he when they asked did he exceed your expectations or did he perform better than last time? You saw a clear difference between Obama and Romney, and and Obama in, with Obama in, in in positive territory much more dramatically. Um, I thought I I just thought Obama was kind of great, partly because uh, you know the Libya thing is a good example. I thought the best he could hope for was a draw. It, going into the debate on Twitter, all all the conservatives were amping up for that as like this big issue. There was a big investment in that, and they were talking about Hillary and blah blah blah. I thought the most Obama can hope for was a was a draw, but I thought he actually uh, prevailed. And, you know, partly because of the Candy Cal- uh, Crowley uh, fact check. Now, there may be there will be an ongoing debate, you know, how explicitly did Obama call that terrorism and that thing. But first of all, I'd much rather have me having Obama would rather have that debate than the yes. when did you know that, that our ambassador was threatened and why didn't you do anything debate? This is a much more innocuous debate. And I, and I just thought, you know, it, 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 as for the teleprompter thing, well, he clearly didn't need a teleprompter because he didn't have one, and, and he was, for the most part, very fluid. And you can say they were many of them were set speeches that he that he kind of have memorized. And the ta- town hall format is maybe admits to that. But I also thought Obama was agile. There were there were several times when Romney tried to create a, 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 a kind of a confrontation on the oil permits on the, uh, how big is your pension, how big is your pension? And I thought, really, frankly, both times he was a little annoying in the way he was hectoring him. Yeah. Um, and and Obama basically 
always either prevailed or just neutralized it. He denied, Romney wanted these to be highlight reel moments. Obama was agile enough never to give that to him. Um, and I, I thought Obama raised the doubts about himself and he, and, he, and he reinforced some of the doubts about Romney that he had failed to drive home the first time around. So I think on points, high school debatey, it, it was close, Obama maybe won barely. But I think in terms of his larger mission uh, about presentation of him and presentation of Romney, this had to be at a, mom at a minimum a momentum stopper for Romney's momentum. And I don't know whether it'll be a momentum reverser. That's my kind of take. Yeah, I mean, I don't totally disagree with a lot of that. I think that he certainly, Obama certainly did get a lot more fluid and agile as it went on. But for the first couple of answers, I was like, dude, if I were on his team, I'd be a little bit worried right now because you had a lot of halting speech, a few words where he started to stumble. But yeah, he, he pulled it together and got it together. Um, and I think, you know, by the time that we were halfway through the debate, that wasn't particularly noticeable as an issue. Um, so, yeah, I think he did better, for sure. Um, and, you know, what I've seen in terms of the polling coming out looks a lot like actually what we saw kind of after the vice presidential debate, at least in terms of a lot of the snap polls. Mm -hmm. or it looks like it's pretty evenly divided. You know, a third thought Romney won, a third thought Obama won, a third thought neither or both won, um, which, frankly, is what Obama needed to have happen at a minimum. Um, I think that there are some opportunities where he possibly could have gone after Romney harder. I was a little bit surprised that the 47% point didn't come up much earlier. Um, yeah, but you know the virtue of that is Romney surely had a reply planned. He surely had something to say in response. Obama saved it until the moment when a Ro Romney didn't get to respond. Yeah, that's right. That's true. But I was still a little bit surprised because I felt like that was an opportunity where yeah, Romney, if you watch him in debates, when he gets attacked, when he gets attacked hard, he responds to that in a very visually uncomfortable fashion. And I guess that's that's the only thing that surprises me about that, is that if I were Obama, I would probably have wanted to take advantage of that a little bit more. Um, and we didn't get a ton of that last night, which is, you know, to Romney's credit, he's learning how to do this stuff and look a lot looser about it, which is good. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was... I think it was pretty much a draw, and, uh, you know, I think that obviously you're going to have a lot of Democrats say that Obama prevailed. You're going to have a lot of Republicans say that Romney prevailed, but I, I think for a lot of undecided voters, there's not a clear winner out of this. Um, one thing I did think was interesting, though, is looking at some of the snap polling afterwards, it appeared that Romney did fare better with regard to a lot of the economic issues. So that's that's a question. I mean, my view has always been that, yes, the economy fares as the most important issue to most voters, but I also feel like we've had some things recently happen that have changed that um, to some degree so that it's not the only issue, it's just a major one. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think a lot of Republicans will be pointing to Romney's polling and how people responded to him on economic things, and obviously that's a good thing for him, but I, I don't think that that's quite Puzzle. Yeah, there was a funny, um, uh, on the economy, I think it was the CNN poll, where they said, and first of all, they said, as it happened, the polling sample skewed a little Republican. It had more Republicans than the ele than the electorate. But uh, but still, it gave Obama, like, a, I don't know, s by six points or something, he won the debate. But then they looked uh, more deeply, and by a larger margin, they trusted uh, Romney with the economy. Um, but then on the other hand, as I recall, they thought Obama uh, cared more about the middle class. And, and that seemed to me that, I mean, as for the economy, you know, you, Obama's just in a tough spot. The economy is not great, and he's the incumbent. And now I, I think if you look at the numbers finally, you can, you can argue, look, he inherited a mess. Basically, once he reversed the momentum within a few months, it's gotten better and better. He can make that case. It's a subtler case to make, and maybe he should get better at making it in debates. But I think there's not that much he can do about that. I thought that the number about the middle class, that's exactly the, what, what should have been one of Obama's primary goals last night. He, he, he let, in the previous debate, uh, Romney succeeded in reframing himself as no longer the heartless plutocrat who doesn't care about you. That was, that was Romney, one of Romney's triumphs in the first debate. I think Obama regained a little of that ground 
last night, and that, that one polling number that, 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 uh, that Ob as I recall, Obama's the one who cares about the middle class would, success, w w would suggest that he, uh, he, he prevailed on that. I don't know. I think that's probably true. As to the economic improvements, I mean, I go back and I look at, I think it was a poll that Stan Greenberg did a while back where they went and they tested this message of the economy has improved and they tested it amongst Democrats too. And if I'm recalling correctly, everybody just thought that was a terrible message and it just didn't seem to yeah. ring true with what people were experiencing out there. Um, I mean, I think you can always point to statistic things that back up a case like that. But at the end of the day, I think the reality is that in a lot of these swing states, the economy really sucks. And so I, I think actually it's smart that Obama was veering away from that. The one place where I know there has been some criticism of him dabbling in that was with regard to his gas prices answer. I didn't actually have a bit, as big a problem with that as I did some other things in the debate from his perspective. But... There are a lot of people who are saying, well, he basically said that, you know, when the economy sucks, gas prices are low, and when the economy is good, gas prices are high. But right now, gas prices are high, and nobody thinks the economy is good. I think that's certainly something that a lot of people seem to be taken away. Um, I think maybe before we get into in, any more of this, I think he, maybe if that's going to keep coming up, um, maybe Sting wants to find a slightly better way of of handling that because I think, you know, we, we generally recognize that a lot of the reason that gas prices have gone up is because of instability in the Middle East and concerns about Iran and all of that. I, I don't think it's necessarily common improvements at all. But in any event, I think that that's the only thing I felt like to an argument on economics that maybe was validated by certain statistics, but really not borne out by people's personal experience. Otherwise, I generally agree with you. I think he did a better job of doing the sort of, you know, I can relate to every man kind of thing that we've seen before, uh, which, you know, I have to say I'm a, I'm a little bit surprised that he did as well on that as he did last night because Obama isn't always the best debater. And, right. Well, well that, that's what yeah. kind of pleasantly surprised me is that, yeah, a lot of Obama's success was about it being this town hall format where he can just give his little professorial talk. Uh Right. But I also thought that that in the moments when it got debatey and out and out confrontational, he acquitted himself well. And I thought you saw that uh, kind of telling in, in a certain frustration on Romney's part. And in fact, I thought one subtle difference was last time, you know, if you just compared shots of the two when the other person was talking, Obama totally lost that in the first debate, right? Yeah, it was. And, and I thought this time that was kind of slightly reversed. I thought Obama's uh, Obama's look was, was kind of great, and Romney just sometimes looked a little frustrated and annoyed. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Um, well, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily agree on Romney's part, um, but I do think Obama's demeanor when Romney was talking on the whole was better. They both had, I think, about two moments each where they sort of stood up and looked like they were going to interrupt, and I thought, oh, God, we could be headed for an Al Gore, George Bush moment here. And, you know, I would kind of, like debate coach, I would kind of hope that nobody I was working with would ever engage in that kind of thing. But they both pulled back. So, you know, that was one thing that I was sort of watching and semi-concerned about as the thing went on and actually didn't happen. So, yeah, I think I think both of them are getting better demeanor-wise. I think, um, you know, Romney doesn't look nearly as stiff and robotic as he has in the past, and I think that uh, Obama managed to assume a better sort of look when he was waiting for Romney to be done, and that, you know, that's to both benefit. What did you think about the anger thing? I heard some people saying Obama seemed a little angry, or some people Romney. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think it was really out of control, over the top. I didn't really feel like there was a lot of anger on display, although, you know, understand when they were going back and forth on the energy stuff, like obviously you're going to get a little bit of that because there are points that both of them feel that they really need to get out forcefully. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I didn't feel like there was a lot of anger on display. Uh, I do feel like the longer that the debate went on, the more we started getting answers that to me felt like they were drifting off topic rather sharply. Um, for instance, I think the, the gun, the guns question, um, it seemed like Romney's answer was, I like guns, but let me talk about some other stuff like parents. 
Yeah, that was the answer. And I thought... And then Obama's answer was like, hey, I believe in the Second Amendment, but let me talk about a little bit about parents, and then let's talk about teachers. And I'm like, guys, the question's about guns. Like, just answer the question. But I think on that, you know, speaking to somebody who, who is very pro-Second Amendment, kind of my read on that is, oh, well, once again, we all realize we're dealing with two guys running here who aren't really, like, you know, the most interested folks in the world when it comes to guns and gun rights. So that's, I guess, what you would expect. But, but I felt like there, that sort of kicked off screen where to me I felt like some of the answers kind of disappeared and some of the comments were not particularly memorable so I, you know, I don't know Maybe my, my read was Romney he's got his pro NRA position he doesn't especially want to advertise it right now since he's got that vote locked up and, and when you start looking at undecideds they probably don't happen to be NRA members you know so he just wanted to get away from it and maybe Obama yeah. had a similar reaction. But. Maybe. I, I don't know. See, I, I actually kind of dispute that because I think that if you look at Romney's, I mean, I don't know how much your average undecided may be looking at Romney's record on guns. But for me, I mean, that's that's actually always been one of my big quibbles mm -hmm. with him is he actually has a really, really crappy record when it comes to that. In my, um, so, you know, I don't know. I guess it depends a little bit on what sort of undecideds we're looking at, because I think there was a mention that one person who was in one of the focus groups, uh, she was an undecided, as in she was undecided as to whether to vote at all or to vote for Romney. Well, if you're looking at that kind of undecided, yeah. these sorts of bad issues may matter. And it depends a little bit, I think, also where you're looking at undecideds, because I would suggest if you're looking at, like, Colorado, if you're looking at Ohio... In those states, I imagine a lot of undecideds right. are people who, you know, probably are more pro-gun than anti-gun, and so if they can't figure out what they're doing, all of these little things count. Yeah. However, I don't think one of them prevailed on it over the other, personally. I mean, I just sort of watched it and thought, yeah, these guys don't really get it from my perspective. Now, are you, are you going to join the conservative uh, complaining about Candy Crowley's moderating job? Um, well... No, I'm, I'm disinclined to, although I understand why people are annoyed about that particular intervention. The, fact, the one case. intervention, yeah. I get why they're annoyed about it. On the flip side, I also understand that I think what, why she intervened there was because there was a specific phraseology that Romney had referenced that actually didn't correspond with what was said. I think it's one of these things where on the precise point – there may be an inaccuracy, but when you're looking at the broader context, the characterization is basically right. Romney's characterization, you mean? Yeah. I mean, I, I personally probably would not have intervened there, unsurprisingly. Um, but I, I kind of understand, you know, being the sort of person who oftentimes when I'm on Twitter, for instance, tends to play the pedant a little bit. Uh -huh. And expects if somebody uses a particular word, that's exactly what they meant. I also kind of understand why, if he, if he references a particular phrase not being used, and she thinks that it was used, why would she say that? But, you know, I think there's, it seemed to me, um, this is not something that I've delved into hugely, but based on the chatter that I was seeing last night, the issue seems to be um, whether we were talking about, like, terrorists doing bad stuff or Libya specifically being an act of terror. Right. I think looking at the transcript, it's true that uh, Obama didn't say this thing in Libya was an act of terror. It was in his closing remarks. He said, "We will, America will not be whatever, you know, by acts of." I I do think. Well, let me say, as for Crowley, I think there's two criticisms. Um, you know that moderators shouldn't intervene at all in fact checking. You know, not the job. And then that this uh, one, this this case was a little too fuzzy for her to have intervened. She didn't quite have Romney dead to rights, although she probably thought she did when she intervened. I kind of I kind of accept that because you look at the transcript, it's a little fuzzy. Now, I would, on the other hand, say that if, that if after Obama gave those remarks, you had pulled aside anyone who was in the audience and said, you know, at the end here when he says act of terror, do you think he's talking about this Libya thing? They would have said, well, yeah, I mean, that's what this whole, that's what he was talking about. I don't, so I don't think, I think basically Romney was in that sense wrong. It also turns out that apparently the following day, Obama more explicitly uh, used the, the, the terror, you know, so, so Romney's saying he went 14 days with, you know, as a, without calling it terrorism is a pretty dubious claim. But 
<laughs> I think I think you can make the case that it wasn't Crowley's place unless she just had him dead, dead, dead to rights. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's right. I, I would actually flip it. I would say that if you ask people looking at that transcript, like, did he specifically make a reference to terrorism? They would say yes. And then if you said to them, so was he saying that Libya was an instance of terrorism, or was he saying that this was about a video? I think most people would say, I think he's saying it's about the video. And I think that that did continue as a narrative afterwards, which is why you saw things like, I think there was an ABC story right at the end of September about how, like, finally the administration saying terror, you know. Mm. I think that, so I think that the context there tended to favor the point that mm. Romney was making, but I'm not sure. I would have to go back and double check the transcript, but I'm not actually sure that the specific wording that he cited, I don't know that his critique was accurate 100% on that. But yeah, I think, you know, probably being a bit pedantic, Possibly she got it a little bit off. Um, yeah, I agree with what you say that perhaps that's not the place of a moderator. Um, I didn't hugely have an issue with it at the time. Um, I guess my attitude is, you know, if you're going to intervene and if you're going to hold somebody to specifics about wording, well, you know, then do it and do it outright. But yeah, I mean, I, I can I can understand based on what you said that yeah, there, there's a legitimate reason for people to be a bit. About that, yeah. So where do you where do you think we are now? The in trade uh, betting market, the the betting on a, the 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 number on Obama went up from like it had been around sixty one percent. It went up to I think sixty four percent or something like that by this morning. Went up a few points. Uh, I've I've wondered why it was that high going into the debate because most of the national polls seem to have Obama behind, and the swing state stuff seems very ambiguous and fluid. So I, I don't understand why people are assuming national advantage won't translate into swing state uh, advantage. So I, I thought the in-trade number was a little high, and I wondered whether all the betters are just following Nate Silver or what. But, but, Maybe. <laughs> but, 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 but uh, you know, as an Obama's supporter, I hope that the chances are now 64%, but where do you think we are? Um, my sense is that we're probably about the same as where we were a few days ago. I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see if, if we see any shifts in public polling coming out of, out of this debate. Um, but I guess, you know, there are a couple factors that I would say do feature in this. I mean, first of all, we had a Supreme Court decision that upheld a high early voting. That is a big win for the Obama team. Um, that is going to give them more capability to get their people to vote. So particularly if you have people who've sort of been wavering, maybe haven't haven't committed so far, if they bring them over onto their side, that's going to be a factor. And so, you know, my view has been that if the numbers that we're seeing, for example, you know, I don't know who's providing the best numbers of this cycle yet, but let's say hypothetically that PPP has actually had it right. If PPP has it right in Ohio, Looking at some numbers that they tweeted out the other night, I think that they said that 19% of voters that they surveyed had already voted. And of those, something like 70% had voted for Obama. Of the remaining ones, they said that they were 51 to 46 for Romney. If you actually do that math, that suggests that right there, if that actually translates to the whole of the state, there are a lot of ifs here, note, that suggests that Romney is already in a position where he can't win Ohio. Now, I don't know if those numbers are right. They very well may not be. A lot of this is dependent on ground game. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard a fair bit about ground game in Colorado. I've heard a fair bit about ground game in Wisconsin. Um, I see a lot about ground game in Virginia. Ohio is a little bit more nebulous for me. Um, on the one hand, we know that Republicans have a reasonably good operation there because there's a lot of the Boehner operation. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, Obama obviously did win the state last time, and I would suspect that the Obama guys being the Obama guys, they didn't just walk away and go, oh, I will close up a shop in Ohio and just deal with this again in four years. So there are a lot of different factors there, but I do think that this is probably going to come down to Ohio, and so when I'm looking at polling and metrics and what's going on with early voting, where, where volunteer numbers are. That's the state that I'd be looking at the most, and I feel like it still favors Obama a little bit. 
Um, you know, maybe he's maybe if he wins it, it's going to be a very narrow scrape. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, particularly with that Supreme Court decision, it, it tends to favor him a bit more. Now, the other factor that we don't know is what's going on with ad buys in a lot of these states. Because, you know, when we look at fundraising numbers, clearly both of these guys are doing a pretty good job of raising money. Mm -hmm. But criticisms that we've heard of the way that the Romney campaign has been releasing its numbers is that with them releasing combined totals between the Romney campaign and the RNC, it is in some ways sometimes masking the fact that the ponderance of donations are actually going to the RNC and there's a limit on how much they can do mm. advertising that's coordinated with the Romney campaign. So that's another question. You have a lot of money floating around out there. Um, it's unclear where all of that is being spent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Romney guy certainly who was in the primary had this tendency to only really ramp up and ramp up sharply in the final two weeks. That's probably what they're doing here. My question is, is it going to work? Because in so many of these swing states, you have so much early voting. Right. Yeah, I mean, understandably, that's going to be mm. already decided. But I, you know, I'm not sure whether that works as well in a general election context as it does in a mm. primary. What about super PAC money? I'd assume Romney has a big advantage there. Do we know? Um. I have not looked at those numbers. The question that I always have is that if you compare, if you compare sort of super PACs or right-leaning groups to left-leaning groups, one of the issues that you can sometimes encounter there is that people tend to exclude particular unions. Mm. Um, and I think that that would be an important number to look at. I think if I'm remembering this right, I want to say it was the 2010 cycle. If you looked at the group spending the most money, mm -hmm. So to take, I think the group spending the most money, not the groups who take in the most money, but the group spending the most money, drop out candidates and party committees, and you just look at external groups. I think you find that SEIU possibly was even the number one. Hmm. Right? So that's the question. Somebody would need to go and look at that. I, I will totally cop to not having done that. And I, again, I imagine that that varies a little bit state by state. Hmm. I think that some states where you know, unions are very plugged in and they're a very big part of the infrastructure and probably are doing a lot to run ads. I would speculate that that is probably more the case in, say, Wisconsin mm -hmm. than it is in New Hampshire. Um, but yeah, that's that would be a question to me. Yeah, I and I would think that if last night helped either fundraising operation, it, it helped Obama more than Romney, because I've got to think that his first performance really, really put some serious doubts in people with money. Um, yeah. So I think that's... If, if it's good for anybody, it'll be good for him. I think that's probably true. I mean, the Romney guys have tended to be pretty good at capitalizing on major events like debates in order to bring in cash. I think at the last one, they brought in something like 10 or 11 million within like the first 24 to 48 hours after the wow. debate. So, you know, I think that they're pretty good at doing this. However, yeah, if I were an Obama voter or an Obama, a prospective Obama donor, I probably would have like pulled back my credit card after the last debate. But there are a lot of important Senate races and House races and gubernatorial races out here. Um, maybe I should pause and take a quick mm -hmm. look at them. So mm -hmm. Now I think there's a reason to go, yeah, okay, I'll get the credit card back out again. Right. So that's, that's probably beneficial from the standpoint, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. So the next one is foreign policy. I've got to think that's less <laughs> likely to be huge. Right? I, I assume that viewership drops off a little, and uh, and the, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, I feel like at the moment, people there are a lot of people who have really been stunned by what happened in Libya. Like, oh my God, since the, the first yeah. time since what happened with Iran, our ambassador like got killed. Right. I think with that being the situation, you may see more people tune in. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think the foreign policy one, that's the one that I expect is going to be a great frustration for me because I don't see a ton of difference between these guys on foreign policy and a lot of things that I, I'm critical of on foreign policy. They they are both a little bit weak on from my standpoint. No, I, I think Romney's strategy will be to point to turbulence in the world, and, and, and we've seen within the last few weeks how it this is fluid. Things Things happen, and suddenly you're feeling insecure, you know? And I think yeah. that's what he's going to capitalize. He's saying we are seeing the chickens of the Obama foreign policy come home to roost when things like Libya happen or the, the reaction to the video. Any any form of turbulence, he's going to.
try to capitalize on. So we'll see. I, I agree. My question, though, is, I, I guess, and I felt like he was, with his answer last night on Libya and his inability to pin Obama on that and really hit him hard, I think part of the issue there is that Romney's capable of saying, well, this is what I don't like, but he's not that he's not quite that capable yet, maybe he will be before the next one, of saying, here's what I do differently, because I think so far the answer seems to be a lot going back a lot to the talking points. Like, that's where I see him do it the most. Right. And I won't apologize, okay? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm for that, too, but I'm not sure, it just as a practical matter, that not apologizing, like, prevents people from getting killed. He, Maybe it was a long run, he, but I don't think you can draw that direct connection, and so I think he needs to work on how he, how he actually puts that point across a little bit better. Yeah. I also think that kind of it appeals to the Republican base, a lot of the Republican base, but I don't know. You know, we'll see. But, but anyway... Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm personally, I just want to say I'm in a good mood after the debate. I'm glad to <laughs> You're happy for me? A little bit down and dejected last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have my moods. I was a little bit done. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, thanks again. Let's do this again. Absolutely. Thank okay, you. bye-bye.